When your child is diagnosed with diabetes as an infant, you have to do everything. Diabetes care is 24-7. It does not take the night off. <laughs> David is going to be one year old in a few days. <coughs> And two days ago, he was diagnosed with diabetes. This looked pretty Daddy sad about it. <laughs> Daddy came and got you. Hello, baby David. Daddy. Do you want some? He was about 11 months old. And my wife, Toby, is, uh, was a young pediatrician at the time. And uh, so she had a really keen eye for problems in children. Mm -hmm. One thing that had happened, which was quite scary, is I'd went to get him out of the car seat, and I, when I went to get him, he was just kind of staring, you know, uh, vacant, eyes open, but vacant. I mean, it's very alarming, very unusual behavior. So she brought him in to clinic. His blood sugar was 800, which is eight times the normal blood sugar level. She collected him, put him in the car, raced out the door and said, you know, David has diabetes and our lives have changed forever. And the task was upon us to manage his blood sugar levels. We really had two tools at our disposal. We had insulin and we had glucose, sugar, basically, um, carbohydrates, which is in foods like fruit, uh, juices, foods that would raise blood sugar, carbohydrates, um, we would use to keep his blood sugar from going too low. And then insulin was delivered to bring his blood sugar down. So these things are working to oppose one another. And the reason you need the carbohydrates is because you can very often overdose insulin just a little bit. But even a small amount of insulin can be lethal. We were injecting him with insulin with a needle probably seven times a day. And we were checking his blood sugar 15 times a day. That's how we started. When we checked his blood sugar, we used his fingers and his toes. So if he was playing with blocks in the middle of the room, I'd come up and I'd poke him in a toe. We had bruises up and down his arms for those first two months when we were giving him injections. And that was something that really was, was, was hard for us to see. <laughs> You're constantly in this tension between high blood sugar and low blood sugar because neither extreme is acceptable. There was so much work to be done, and so all of my faculties were focused on taking care of this little boy. I guess with my training, it was just too hard to think about that he would be compromised because I didn't do a good job. And with Ed's personality, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> Ready? Go on. Come on, let's go get him. <laughs> down. The scariest prospect that we as parents face is this phenomenon called dead in bed syndrome. With people with type 1 diabetes, there's a small number of people who go to bed at night and they, no and they don't wake up. This is his glucose level over the past um, roughly three hours. You can see the fact that he's going down means that if he weren't about to eat, he could go low. But fortunately, we're going to be feeding him with rice and things that would make them go higher. So I put the test strip in the meter. I draw up some blood. If it works, I just scoop up a little into the test strip. And 104. <laughs> I'm just going to see how it's going in. All right, give it a stir. There you go. All right, there you go. There's the carbohydrates. So, David, we need to check uh, on the blood sugar situation. Oh, yeah, you want to check yourself? We can take good care of David day and night, 24-7, seven, seven days a week. But what happens when he goes to college? I wouldn't be there, my wife wouldn't be there to manage his blood sugars for him or to help him take care of his diabetes. And that overriding concern, worry, and fear that I had that really inspired, in my mind, the idea of building a bionic pancreas, a system that would basically take care of his diabetes for us in our absence, automatically, better than we could and more safely than we could. I like that. The fact that Toby was a pediatrician, I was an engineer, that's really what started us down that path. The bionic pancreas really builds on the shoulders of really decades of technology development in medical devices.
It comes from the synthesis of continuous glucose monitors, from insulin pumps, from smartphones. And it's the integration of those three technologies that makes a system which is really better than the sum of its parts. It's basically got automated decision-making software that determines how much drug to deliver to the person with type 1 diabetes every five minutes. It makes 288 decisions every day that you no longer have to make. Well, a dad's invention to save his diabetic son could change the lives of millions of people with diabetes. It is today's big idea. Ed Damiano developed the bionic pancreas. How confident are you that your dad can meet this goal and make this deadline to get you off to college safely? I don't doubt that he can do it. It's definitely very challenging, but if anyone could do it, my dad could. I think what we have to look forward to is that our device will play a meaningful role in keeping all those people with type 1 diabetes who use it safe and healthy until there is a biological cure.